we we stopped at gratitude and off of gratitude we took the side street if you would on worship amen and so what we're talking about now is worship amen we're talking about the fact as believers amen that our worship has to be amen rendered unto god in such a way amen that uh, it shows from our hearts, amen, the gratitude that we have for him, amen. And let me tell you something. I want to tell you the spirit of worship that was exemplified on last week in the church was amazing, amen. So I'm like, oh, we got it, amen. And we stopped off at Moses. Well, we talked about Moses standing on what? Holy ground. So we have to recognize where we are when we worship. We talked about what? The attitude of worship. The atmosphere of worship. The action of worship. Amen. The aroma of worship. Amen. And today I want to continue, amen, with the practice of worship. And I want to show you a few words in the Greek. The Greek words, in a sense, to show you a little bit about what worship really is all about, how God views worship, amen? So here's the thing. I told you that worship is not just entertainment, amen? What is worship? Lifestyle, what else? Worship is something that we render unto who? Unto God, right? It's something that we give, watch this, that's due to God. Why, why is worship due to God? Why, why would you, why would you think we owe God worship? Why do you think that is? Hmm? Gives him the glory. All right. Amen. All right. What else? Honor. <laughs> Amen. All right. Amen. This ain't no trick question here. This, this is an easy question here. Amen. Amen. What else? What else? What else? Because he's our creator, right? Amen. And and I found, and I'm gonna show you something this morning. We all worship something. And and what I want you to do in your life is to look at balancing out what you worship. Amen. Because if you spend more time with a certain object, uh oh, if you spend more time in a certain activity. Amen. If you spend more time in that activity than you do with God, worshiping him, then there's a possibility that that's your God. Amen. And what happens to a lot of people is that they get disappointed. Come on, somebody. When something, you ever, you ever notice how we fall out? We, we just, when our marriage ain't going right, we fall apart. You know why? Because we wife worshiping or husband worshiping. That, that's the reason why. Amen. Uh, the job ain't going right. You know what you're doing? You're worshiping the job. The job didn't let you down. Child ain't acting right. Amen. You're worshiping the child. So the child goes off or whatever the case may be. And then now you're so distraught you want to take your life. Amen. You know, I'm extreme. You follow what I'm saying? And that's what happens to people. They put their, 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 their God is the stock market, right? Stock market crashes. What happens? Bank account goes to zero. I can't live. So what do they do? Pop. You find what I'm saying? Life is over. Why is life over? Because now the object of their worship has let them down. Amen. And can I tell you something? If you really want to deal with the problems in your life, every problem is a worship problem. You hear what I'm saying? Every problem that shows up in your life, it's either you're going to deal with the problem or you're going to worship the problem. And when you worship the problem and become wise in your own eyes, amen, and you become wise in your own understanding, amen, not trusting the Lord, then everything, you ever notice, everything you do to try to fix it, it gets worse, amen, because it's an object, come on and say amen, somebody, it's a what, it's an object, and believe it or not, we worship more than we really know. Listen to this, um, and, and there's a few things I want you, last week we talked about how David was carrying the ark, remember? 
the Ark of the Covenant. They were carrying it. It fell off. One guy thought he was going to rescue it from falling on the ground. Amen. And he died in the presence of God. Amen. But David learned his lesson. Amen. Go to First Chronicles chapter 15. <clears throat> See, once you know what the protocol is. Uh-oh, there's another word for you. Once you understand the protocol of worship. Amen. Once you understand the purpose of worship. Once you understand the power of worship. Amen. Then you're able to properly worship. Are you with me? See, I believe a lot of us just don't know. We just don't know when to lift our hands or what. Well, here's the thing. I don't want you to know when. I want you to know why. Why do I stand up and worship? Amen. Why? Listen, there is a transcending feeling. Amen. When you go into a football field, come on somebody. I'm talking about college football. And the band is playing. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, y'all. All right, all right. Look at that. See? And, and everybody's screaming, right? Come on, somebody. And every, everybody, everybody's screaming. Come on, man. Stay with me, man. Amen. Everybody's like, woo! And they paint their face. What do you think that is? Listen, when the team is walking in, everybody got their suits on, the college, they go to visit the team and everybody trying to touch them. And then they carrying the trophy and they touching that idol and they're walking in. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's a transcending feeling that a euphoria, amen, that people feel a sense of awe, a godlike feeling that they are worshiping something bigger than themselves. I wish I had somebody. Now the question is, when we come to church on Sunday morning, come on somebody, boom, 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 boom. Do we have the same type of feeling, the same type of awe, the same type of transcendence, amen, that makes us feel what, what I mean is an out of body experience. I'm talking about you sitting there saying, is that me worshiping? You find what I'm saying? It's something that you sense. And watch this. Not just on feeling, but on experience. It's something you experience. You know all is breaking loose in your life. But yet, you can still lift your hands and praise a God that, come on somebody, that you know that's greater than anything that's going on in your life today. Do I have somebody? See, see, I want us to get to that place. I believe Sunday we got there. Amen. And what I want to do is each week I want to turn up the notch a little bit. But here's the thing. We shouldn't have, listen, when you, listen, whether you know football or not, you come, you could just land here from another country. But if you walk on that, on that football field, you don't have to, you don't have to ask what to do. You just look around. Come on, somebody. So, watch this. So, when people come to our church and they're looking around, and we just, guess what they're going to do? But if they sense of gratitude, I'm talking about people who really, listen, when I, well, I know all of your lives, some of you, amen, some of you hiding, but I know, I know most of you, amen. And I know you got a reason. Come on, somebody. I know you got a reason. I know you got a reason beyond what you can even imagine. Sister Williams said last week, when I come into the house of God, everything else that's going on on the outside, I'm just leave it there. But it, I, I transform when I Walk into the church. What, 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 what happens? This is a place of refuge, y'all. Are you with me? Watch this. Watch this. First Chronicles chapter 15. <laughs> y'all got me started. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm, I'm First Chronicles chapter 15 verse 15 says what? 
the sons of the Levites, look, look what they did now. First of all, they got the proper guys carrying it now. Right? Watch this. Carried the ark of God. What did they carry it, y'all? Where did they carry it? Uh-huh. Because they, this is after they had that incident. Come on, somebody. This is after they found out how holy God is. Can I tell you something? Watch your attitude when you come into the house of God. Why? Because I told you last week. Because God is what? Holy. So what they do this time? He said, man, shoot. David learned his lesson. And in the second attempt to exalt the Lord's presence, watch this, it was according to what? Oh, Lord Jesus. See, worship has to be done not the way that you want it, but the way the Lord mapped it out in his word for it. Worship the Lord your God with, come before him with, amen. Amen. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and not what? We ourselves. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. He says, he says, uh, the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with the poles thereon as Moses had commanded according to, first of all, let's, let's back up for a minute. We want to make worship according to the way we want it. Amen. Sometimes we want to change the way worship happens in church. Amen. First of all, watch this. First of all, who told them to put it on the cart? The first time. God says my presence is so holy. That I didn't tell you to put it on an ox and a cart. That's the reason why it didn't work the first time. Well, let me rewind that thing real quick. You're trying to live your life. (laughs) Amen. And what you're doing, what we're doing is we're making changes to God's word to fit our conveniences. Come on, somebody. And watch this. And everything, when you hit a bump in the road, the word just falls off. Y'all were seeing this. Y'all, y'all seeing this? When they hit a bump in the road, what happened? The ark did what? See, that's because they wasn't doing it according to the way Moses. Co- what if you were to start living your life according to the word and not making God, making God's word convenient to what you want and how you want it. What if you were to really live it? Amen. What would happen? You would begin to see real change, not temporary change. See? So so as they were going with the ark the first time, they were doing it according to the, the way they made it up. Moses had specific Instructions. He says, according to what? The word, the what? According to the word. I'm trying to help somebody. So therefore, worship must be done according to the what? Word of the Lord. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. In worship, one of the most subliminal, subliminal imperatives of worship. Amen. That God has issued. It links to our logic. Amen. Go to Psalm 29. Amen. Psalm 29 and verse 2. The logic of, the logic, the the logic of worship. (laughs) Psalm 29. When I say logic. What I'm saying is, it's not unreasonable. And logically speaking, amen, if I were to say, what's the logic behind worship? You ready for this? Write this down somewhere in your book. Amen. Or put it on your heart somewhere. 
if you can remember it. It's simply this. God deserves worship. That's it. That God what? God. Some of us are putting God on the cart when he wants to be in the pole. He wants, he wants the man of God to carry the word. So just imagine this is how they would walk. And every, every step they make, they would stop and sing a song. See? Now that's going up to the steps, but when they were carrying the ark, they were very careful. The men had to be purified. They had to be, they had to be ceremonially cleansed in order to handle the word of God. So, so watch this. The logic behind worship is this. Ascribe to the Lord the what? The what? The what? The glory do his what? Hey. Look what he says. He says, worship the Lord in what? Holy array. Do you think he's talking about your clothes? He's talking about what did you put on inside? You can't come to worship and your mind is all outside. Your mind is all over there somewhere. Worship has to be done in unholy array. Come on, somebody. You know what I found out? Here's what I found out. I found out that uh, what we have to do is that we we worship God in a worthy manner. And in order for worship to be worthy, you have to bow down. <laughs> you hear what I say? You have to what? You have to bow down. You have to bow down. You can't be above God and worship him. So acceptable worship flows not just from, from, a, from a logical point of view, but also from knowledge. Worship, acceptable worship, flows from a true knowledge of God. Watch this. That follows his revealed will. Okay, let me break it down for you because I know that's deep. I'm going deep this morning. Watch this. It's based on what I know, but what God has revealed, amen, that his will is. And so based on me knowing what his will is, what is his will? Okay, that's easy. What's his will? What's his revealed will to you? Serve me. Come on. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. His revealed will. What is God? Have you ever thought about what God revealed will is for you? What has God revealed about himself to you? Ready? He's all knowing. Come on, somebody. He is the creator of the universe. Amen. He holds the universe in his hands. Uh, Am I right about it? Watch this. Everything is operating according to his timetable and his will. So therefore, I worship God. It flows. I didn't just show up here because pastor told me. I didn't just show up here because I'm obligated to. No, no, no. At some point that has to change to I'm here because of God's revealed will and because of my knowledge of who he really is. Can I ask a question for you today? To you today. Do you know really? What do you really know about God? What has he shown you? Anybody? What is he showing you? He's faithful. He loves you. Huh? You can always call on him. 
He's a provider. He's a deliverer. He's a doctor. Huh? He's patient, huh? <laughs> I'm patient. <laughs> Boy, I got the patience of Job. Patience of Job. <laughs> Amen. Watch this now. Watch this now. What else has he revealed to you? Huh? Huh? That is real. That you have no doubt in your mind, right? That he is real. So therefore, if you know that he is real, why do you doubt so much? I believe we doubt because things aren't going our way. So then we want to make up a God who can put things right back the way we want it. And, and watch this. And God is not going to give you everything. Because at some point, the relationship has to move from give me. <laughs> Amen. To you appreciate me. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. Amen. It moves from give me to what? I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So, so there are different pictures in the Greek word for worship. The first word is pros, pros, proskuneo. Proskuneo. Go to Matthew chapter 4. Proskuneo is the word. Now, the Greek word proskuneo means to kneel. To kiss one's hands. Mwah. Oh, I'm sorry. This side of the hand. <laughs> All right. To kneel and kiss the hand. So like a king comes in, you would kiss the hand of the king. Got it? Proskuneo. Amen. P-R-O-S-K-U-N-E-O. Proskuneo. That's how it's pronounced in the Greek. The word means to kiss the hand of someone. But it also means as a dog licks his master's hands. Why does the dog lick the master's hand? Y'all ain't trying to hear me. Uh, okay, let me shift that. Huh? <laughs> Proskuneo. To what? To kneel and kiss one's hand, but it also means to eat from that same hand. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But you can't be above the master trying to lick his hands. In other words, it means that you and I have to get into a posture. The right posture. So when you come into God's presence, you have to get low enough. In other words, you got to get off your pedestal and you got to get low enough. To eat from his hands. Because what God is trying to give you. You can't get it standing above him. But it's a position. Of humility. It's a position and it's a posture of humility. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Says what? Back up for a minute. Back up just one more, just real quick. Just back up just a little bit. Back up for just a little bit and go to verse 8. Because cause I'm going to show you who wants proskuneo also. I don't think you're hearing me. Again, the, the who... Oh. oh. 
See, there's, there, there are two types of worship here. Worship motivated by material things. And worship produced by just God's character, who God is. See? Worship because of what you get from my hands. Or worship just because of who I am. Now, if you worship me because of who I am, whoo, that's something. Then what I do for you is just benefits. That's the last thing on the list. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, Lord, I need my rent paid this week because you know the rent man coming. The debit is coming out. Uh, the, uh, uh, the gas man coming to cut the gas off. Uh, I need new tires. <laughs> oh yeah, and hallowed be your name, by the way. <laughs> Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. And then you get real high right there. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord. Yeah. And Lord, just in case you didn't hear, don't forget them tires now. <laughs> y'all ain't trying to hear me. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what we be thinking when we praying, y'all. When we be praying, we want to, yeah, God, glory, yeah. And then we get straight down to what we want. But if you spend time telling God, just worship him, just eating from his hands, just licking on his hands. My dog does that all the time to my wife. I can't stand it. <laughs> it's kind of weird to me. <laughs> Feel kind of weird having the dog licking on my hand. But I, my wife was like, I'm like, man, but boy, everywhere my wife go, around the house, it's a shadow, man. Loyalty. Commitment. I'm like, Mia, come here. Shoot. If my wife, if I'm home, I'm like, Mia, come here. She's like, shoot, I don't know you. But when she come, but when she comes, when my wife ain't home, my wife ain't home, she comes to me, she just, she followed me a little bit. She's like, shoot, I forget him. He, shoot, he ain't, he don't treat me like, he don't give me that affection. He don't give me that attention. Lord have mercy. And so watch this. But we want something from God today, right? Lord have mercy. But we won't give him the affection. We won't follow him around. We, we, we want to get it on Sunday and forget about it on Monday and amen and backslid on Tuesday. Watch this. Watch this. Read for me. <laughs> Nine. Eight. I'm sorry. Took him to a high mountain. See, that, that's the thing you got to ask. That's the, see, here's the thing, right? You can't take nothing from, from Satan without returning worship to him. You don't even know that you're worshiping Satan when you're so consumed with what you're doing that everything else gets cut. And when church gets cut, Bible reading gets cut, devotion gets cut, and you're so consumed in what? In making yourself an idol. Lord have mercy, I need to get to that scripture. Really? That thing can be an idol. God gave it to you as a blessing. But when did the blessing turn into an idol? Because when you come here, it should be a reflection of how appreciative you are of what he's given you out there. That's the key to worship. But Satan wants glory. And he wants worship. Proskuneo, he wants the same thing. He wants you to eat. Whose hand are you eating from?
Because remember, Satan is a counterfeiter. And he'll get you to think that this blessing is from God. But you're not worshiping God that gave you the blessing. Come on, Pastor Preet. Come on, do that thing. Do that thing, Pastor. Do that thing. Watch this. He wants you to take the blessing and turn it into a object of worship. I stop, I stop saying I love my house. <laughs> I, I, every time I said it, something break. I, I ain't doing that. No way. Whoop, forget that. Stop saying I love my house. No, I like it. Stop saying I love boxing. <laughs> Amen. Shoot. You know, because I realize that anything I love more than God is my idol. Amen. Now, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to not love other things other than God? Nope. God wants you to love him first. Love the Lord with all your what? There's no room for two gods. And you want to know why some of us are confused and broken? And, and distraught and always disappointed because you're trying to worship two gods. You're worshiping your problem, your pain, and all this other stuff. But if you were to worship God for who he is, for who he is, for who he is. You know why we got suffering? Because the man has fallen into sin. Blame that on Adam, not on God. I'm sorry, Eve. Her problem. She started this mess. Shoot. And then, and then classic sister move. Uh, the serpent did it. The serpent, uh, uh, come on, boo. Uh, first of all, let me just help you out right quick. You should have been listening. Cause you were just as smart as me. Remember, we were made in perfection. So therefore, we didn't really need to overlearn or relearn. Oh, I hear preachers say that all the time. He need to teach it. No, they were born in what? Perfection. So perfection means you should have heard it the first time, but you fall to your flesh. Come on, say amen, y'all. Don't let me start on marriage. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 10. For his what? It's written. Just the same thing as... When David, the second time, when you, can I tell you something? When you do it according to God's word, it will work, y'all. It will work every time. Because, listen, I just need you to take a promise, stand on it, and believe it, and watch it work. If you do it according to God's word, not, don't go grabbing by his stripes, I'm healed. That, that's not for you. That's not for you. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for a future and a hope. But first of all, if you're going to slavery for 70 years, then that passage belongs to you. But obey the ones that God tells you to obey. First one, worship the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Might. So here's the thing. If you don't have a clear mind in worship and you're thinking about everything else, choir better come with it today. Amen. Amen. Because our minds are ready. Come on, somebody. And the worshipers who are leading in holy array of worship ought to have their hearts ready. Amen. It's, watch this, it's a mirror. So what they're doing should bounce off of us. And what we're doing should bounce off of them. And then when I come up to preach, amen, you should be like, woohoo, it's, we're going to 90 now, pastor. Look what he says. He says, for it is written, you shall what? Worship who? Tell your neighbor, proskuneo. The Lord your God. But but here's the thing. I want to show you. The, hold on now. Hold on now. Next week I'm going to deal with this. Hold on now. Because some of you trying to halfway do it. You got to serve him too. 
You can't say you're worshiping if you're not rendering any service to him. Do I have somebody? He says, and serve him. See, doing your job is one thing. But I'm talking about your service. And you know what I believe? I believe when you have an absence of service, you have an absence of fulfillment and joy. Because what can you render unto God for all that he's done for you? So God doesn't really need it. He just wants to see if you'll do it. <laughs> and he wants to see if you will do it with an attitude. You know why? You know why God wants you to serve? So someone else can come into the kingdom. Because when they see how you handle stuff and when they see how you live and when they see what you're doing in the church, right? Listen, let me, let me say this to you and I'm done. I know the people from your path, they really know you. Amen. And when they come to church and they see you, they're like, uh, uh-uh, that shoot, hold on a minute now. <laughs> who, who, who is that? See, but it's over the years of serving God is how he changes you. Amen.